the prosecution accepted the guilty pleas to three of the six exposure offences, inviting the court to order that the remaining three counts lie on the file not to be proceeded with without further order. The consequence is that today, which would have been the first day of trial, is instead a sentencing hearing. Under Section 57 of the Sentencing Act 2020, a court, when passing sentence, must have regard to five purposes of sentencing, identified as punishment of the offender, reduction of crime, reform and rehabilitation of the offender, protection of the public, and the making of reparation. None of these purposes is directly relevant to sentencing this defendant for the present offences, as he is currently serving a whole life sentence for the kidnap, rape, and murder of Sarah Everard in March 2021. The sentence I pass today will not affect that whole life term. Given the sexual nature of the present offences, notification is automatic. That, too, is academic. A surcharge order will apply in the ordinary way. But sentencing also serves as a public recognition of the fact that offences have been committed, to note the impact upon the victim or victims, and where appropriate, to mark with gratitude their courage and resilience in reporting the offences, giving statements about what happened to them, and being prepared to follow through by giving evidence at any trial. Without that persistence and fortitude by members of the public who have been offended against, justice could not happen. As victims of a sexual offence, each of the women are entitled to anonymity for their lifetimes. I shall refer to them as A, B and C. Each of them is to be commended for reporting and following through. The first of the offences in time involved A, who was cycling up a narrow country lane between Deal and Dover on the 13th of November 2020 at around 2.30 in the afternoon. Photographs of the lane in question show that it has a banked verge up one side with some woodland at the top. As A cycled up, a man stepped out from the trees. He was naked, energetically masturbating, his erect penis looking directly into A's eyes as he did so. From the photographs, he must have been less than two metres away from her as she passed. She could do nothing but cycle on, pedalling slowly up the hill past him as he continued to stand there, manipulating his penis. Further on, A noted an old black car parked up in a lay-by. She came across some walkers, one of them a female police officer, and told them what had happened. She phoned her husband, who went to meet her. He reported the incident to a police car in the area, and when she got home, A reported the offence to Kent Police online, giving what she remembered of the number plate of the black car, insufficient, as it turned out, to enable any tracing. No one got back to her. But when, in March 2021, A's husband drew her attention to the reporting of Sarah Everard's murder, A recognised the person who had exposed himself to her and immediately contacted police. In the meantime, on two separate occasions, a fortnight apart in February 2021, B and C, two female... As you can see, there is a clock that we are counting down on. Uh, we can return now. This may happen uh, throughout the sentencing and these remarks by the judge when it's a legally sensitive nature that cannot be broadcast. But let's return. ...when their job required them to interact with him. His car was caught on CCTV and the registration number was noted by their manager at the time of the second incident. Moreover, he had used the same credit card to pay on both occasions. He could easily have been traced through the car or the card. The incidents were reported to the police on the 28th of February 2021, together with the registration number of the car. Again, nothing was done at the time. Sarah Everard was taken three days later on the 3rd of March 2021. The victim personal statements of A, B and C, read in court just now, speak justly of their shock and upset at this defendant's selfish, 
sexually aggressive acts. All have spoken of their sense of freedom and security taken from them, of feeling vulnerable and fearful for themselves and others going about their ordinary lives. One woman, after discovering who had done this and what he had gone on to do, speaks of a wholly understandable sense of survivor's guilt. The fact that no police came to find him or his black car to question him about these incidents can only have served to confirm and strengthen in the defendant's mind a dangerous belief in his invincibility, in his power sexually to dominate and abuse women without being stopped. In arriving at sentence, I have had regard to the Sentencing Council guideline for the offence of exposure, the guideline on totality and the guideline on reduction in sentence for a guilty plea. The statutory maximum sentence for the offence of exposure is two years. The offence against A, involving masturbation, falls into category two of the applicable Sentencing Council guideline. With a view to totality, I shall treat this as the lead offence aggravated by the two subsequent offences at McDonald's, passing concurrent sentences for each of them. The offence against A is further aggravated by the location in an isolated country lane. The McDonald's offences are made more serious by the timing late at night in the dark. All offences are very seriously aggravated by the fact that the defendant was a serving police officer at the time being a constable in the Metropolitan Police and a member of the Diplomatic Protection Group. On the day he exposed himself to A, the defendant was actually on duty, working from home. The combination of these features takes all the offences well outside the otherwise applicable category range in the guideline. The only mitigation are the guilty pleas entered on the 13th of February. I take into account that this was the first time the defendant was arraigned on the second indictment However, however, it was by no means the earliest occasion on which he could have in indicated a guilty plea. The defendant is attending via a link from his prison. He's to stay seated where he is. For the offence against A, count two on indictment number T2022-0638, the sentence is one of 19 months imprisonment. There will be concurrent sentences of six months on each of counts two and three on indictment T 2022-0320. The total sentence is accordingly one of 19 months. As I have already said, to the existing whole of life sentence from which the defendant will never be released. Welcome to our viewers who are watching from around the world. What you are seeing are live pictures of the Old Bailey here in London where Judge Mrs Justice May is delivering her sentencing remarks in the case of Wayne Cousins. He is being sentenced for indecent exposure, one of the offences committed just days before he killed Sarah Everard. Now, he is not in court. He has appeared via video link from Franklin Prison where he is serving a whole life sentence for murdering Sarah Everard. Uh, in March 2021. She was only 33 years old. The reason this case is so significant is that uh, the case of Sarah Everard sparked national outcry, calls for more action to tackle violence against women as well, and it did real damage to society's confidence in the police. Uh, so there was a huge amount of reaction and response to the Sarah Everard case, which is one of the reasons why this sentencing has been uh, so closely followed. So that was uh, live pictures we were just seeing from the Old Bailey. 